After watching this video, you should be able to use the thinking of intermolecular forces to build a basic explanation of why gases have varying solubilities in water and also why the solubility of those gases will change upon changing the temperature of the water. I also hope that you are able to apply the thinking of intermolecular forces to describe other types of physical properties of substances. So keep that in mind when you watch this that you should be able to apply this thinking to other properties as well. So to further illustrate the explanation I'm going to build for the trend in solubility of these atmospheric gases, I've drawn a microscopic representation. And in this representation down here I have water, the water air barrier is represented right here. And I have represented some of the atmospheric gases O2, CO2, and N2 being dissolved down in the water. I've drawn a couple water molecules here which I'll use in a moment to illustrate the thinking. And up here I have the gases that are in the air, N2, O2, and CO2. Now, in describing the relative solubility of these gases, we're going to evaluate the strength of the induced dipole, dipole interactions between the gas molecules and the water molecules. And what we're going to say is the stronger that interaction is, the more of the gas molecules that will be found at any given time down in the water or dissolved. So because we can evaluate the strength of the induced dipole contribution based on number of electrons, we would say that the weakest induced dipole-dipole interaction would be between nitrogen and water. I'm kind of illustrating that right here. Now in reality, this nitrogen molecule would be surrounded by many water molecules, but I'm just illustrating the interaction between one nitrogen and oxygen in this induced dipole-dipole. And this would be the weakest of the three because we have the fewest number of electrons in N2, making the induced dipole portion of this interaction the weakest. Next, we would consider oxygen because oxygen has more electrons than N2 does, and so it should have a stronger induced dipole-dipole interaction with water. And finally, we would predict that carbon dioxide would have the strongest induced dipole-dipole interaction because carbon dioxide has the most number of electrons. Therefore, we would predict that the solubility of CO2 would be the highest. At any given time, we'd find more CO2 molecules dissolved in the water comparatively than O2 and compared to N2 based on the strength of the induced dipole-dipole interaction. So now let's think about what would happen to the solubility of these gases if we increase the temperature of the water. And to build this explanation, I first want to describe a very dynamic view of the solubility of gases. For example, let's consider CO2 here. We can consider that at any given moment, there's CO2 molecules that are escaping, that have sufficient energy to escape the intermolecular force interactions with water. And there are also some that are entering the water and being held in water due to the intermolecular force interactions, the dipole-induced dipole. So if the concentration of the CO2 is assumed to remain constant, which defines its solubility at a given temperature, we can assume at that moment the rate of the molecules leaving would be equivalent to the rate of the molecules entering or being dissolved. Now let's picture what happens when we increase the temperature. When we increase the temperature, there are more CO2 molecules that have sufficient energy now, because of the increase in average kinetic energy, to escape the intermolecular force attractions between waters and leave the water. Therefore, we would see, as we increase the temperature, an increase in the rate of the CO2s escaping versus the number of CO2s entering. We can also think about the CO2s entering that if there is more CO2s being put up into the air here of higher kinetic energy, we can assume that there are less of lower kinetic energy sufficient to be trapped in the water or solubilized due to the dipole-induced dipole interactions. So the increase in rate of CO2 leaving 
due to the increase in average kinetic energy, which is reflectant of the increase in temperature, would result in the solubility of CO2 going down. We can apply that same thinking to both N2 and O2. And in general, we can say that as the temperature of water increases, gases that are dissolved in it will decrease in their solubility.